it's just not worth going there. We're trying to focus on business tax exemptions. Uh, that one just brings in a discussion that we don't need. Uh, we hope to introduce uh, several bills in, in the next few days to show people the options. Uh, that if you're willing to be bold, you uh, uh, eliminate half of these exemptions, then you can eliminate the income tax and the corporate tax. The fewer you exempt, then you may only be able to lower rates. And I think a lot of people will look at it like we did. If you go down lower, is it really worthwhile? I've also challenges, uh, challenged our university, uh, the state colleges, and all of higher education. What can you do to run uh, more efficiently, just like every business in the state? And I think they'll continue to try to do that. But I don't think I can make any guarantees about the future. Uh, but I know this, and I think I saw Dr. Chip just walk in. Uh, talk to the president of the University of Nebraska, talk to the president of our community colleges and our state colleges. Uh, they want to make sure they have an affordable education for our students. Other questions? What about this pipeline? Uh, well, I, I can tell you where we're at on, on the pipeline. Uh, we had a special session. We had uh, legislation that was passed. And, and now we're <coughs> in the process of determining, uh, making a determination about the approval or disapproval of the route. Uh, we had four informational hearings. We had one uh, huge public hearing in Albion that went from 6 o'clock in the evening to 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I have now received a... Uh, 2020 page report that I'm in the process of reviewing and then I have to make a recommendation to the President of the United States either to approve the route or disapprove it but the ultimate decision will be made by President Obama uh, and again uh, it's the best bedtime uh, reading you've ever had <laughs> if you want to read this report and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, this problem is not only about uh, the gun issue and we have a Second Amendment right in America it's about uh, mental health, and there are privacy issues involved, how much uh, should be available to uh, people at schools and others, the private nature of uh, this individual. Uh, it's about the gun violence, or it's about violence on TV every single day. It's about the judicial system. Think what happened if this individual hadn't shot himself. How long do you think it would have been when justice would have been served in this case? 50 or 100 years? So I think all of those issues need to be uh, discussed. Uh, secondly, you've got to balance uh, the freedoms we have in, in this country. Again, the Second Amendment, the First Amendment. Uh, the other thing uh, that I would, say, uh, would tell you, it's about the safety of those children. And uh, I'm very uncomfortable, for example, some people have suggested maybe we ought to have uh, uh, teachers and principals have, uh, have guns in their classroom. Let me tell you what's going to happen if we do that. There'll be a day when that gun isn't locked up and some third or fourth grader is going to get a hold of it and you know what's going to happen next. Do you support the president's um, uh, use of executive um, action? Uh, first of all, I don't know what he's going to do. Uh, <laughs> secondly, I, I would be very, very careful there. Uh, we have a democracy in America. I see it as governor, okay? Uh, normally the legislature and the citizens are not going to like it if I take executive action without involving everyone else. I think the same thing is probably true at the federal level. Uh, so we, we, we need to be careful there. Uh, we've got to have a conversation, but the Congress has got to be involved in this one.